With the time in today's video, I'm going to give a simple yet detailed explanation on how THC, CBD, and CBC form within cannabis and what leads up to their production. Starting with CBGA, CBGA stands for canagrolic acid, which is one of the precursor cannabinoids. It creates THCA, CBDA, and CBCA, and a few other ones, which of course in turn break down to THC, CBD, and CBC. We will also talk about what it takes for the precursors to change or catalyze. So let's get started. So now we know that CBGA is the precursor, but what comes before that? To create CBGA, two chemicals named geranyl pyrophosphate and olivetolic acid come together to create CBGA. You can see those here below. Now that CBGA is created, the effects are GABA inhibitors, anti-anxiety, antidepressant, antifungal, and possible properties like helping regulate bladder, anti-tumor, and stimulate bone growth. Also, CBGA is not psychoactive, so there is usually not a high concentration in flour unless it's uh, manually modified, but that's because of enzymes and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Actually, we'll talk about that right now. So, how does CBGA turn into THCA, CBDA, and CBCA? Well, during plant growth, enzymes from within the plant, which allocate a certain number or amount of CBGA to be split up into THCA, CBDA, and CBCA, and enzymes are basically something that makes something else produce quicker. So the equation looks something like this, and we can see the CBGA plus the O2 are being turned into the THCA and H2O2, which is just hydrogen peroxide. Now that we have THCA, CBDA, and CBCA, they all do have their own properties, some of them which I listed below. A good thing to note though is that THCA, CBDA, nor CBCA are psychoactive. Turning these into THC, CBD, and CBC only takes one final step and is an extremely simple one. It can happen with direct heat and or time. This process is called decarboxylation, which really is just removing carbon dioxide but it's important to understand how it works. You can see THCA here, and in the red circle I have outlined two oxygen and one carbon. This CO2 is what makes THCA an acid, so when we remove it with decarbing, it becomes THC. A simple equation for this is that THCA is 87% THC, but let's take it one step further to find out why, so hopefully I won't have to explain it again. It's all due to the molecular weight of the molecules THCA and THC. We look at the periodic table, and we can find the weight of each element. Then multiply the weight of each element times the number that comes after it in the name. For example, the C22 is carbon, which is 12.011 multiplied by 22, H30, which is hydrogen, 1.008 multiplied by 30, and then we have O4, which would be oxygen, or 15.99 multiplied by 4. If you do this for both THC and THCA, the numbers come out to 314.47 and 358.48. When you divide 314.47 by 358.48, you get 0.877, which relates back to what we said earlier and proves our equation true. Something to note is that if THCA is left in direct exposure to air for a long enough time, CBN will form instead of THC. And with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. But thank you so much for tuning in and watching, and we'll see you next time.